Welcome back, pro wrestling fans. Welcome back, IWC. It's me. It's me. It's the GOC. And I'll say that to say this because I tell it like it is. Coming to you live to take 25 feet below the surface of the earth. Hmm. I'm live, but I am taping this at the same time. Ah, fuck it. You guys get the idea. Another special edition here on Chaos Corner on Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel with story time with the GOC. You're not going to want to miss this one. Another bonanza, extravaganza here on the channel. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, email me, inbox me, do something for crying out loud. We are less than 15 subscribers away from 1,000 subscribers with a half million total views, two and a half thousand videos here on the channel. One man, unique, unedited, unscripted, raw dog for you to fans with my over 50 years as a fan, a smart, a historian, a researcher, an agent, a producer, a scout, a mark, that's what I said it, a mark. And my over three decades as being a pro wrestling manager and four decades on my pro wrestling journey. Who took the fucking bucks? The promos from pillar to post, coast to coast, and border to border. Which most of you people can't say. That's right. That's what you get here. Relatability from the GOC. I came out two and three times every night in my matches. With my goon squad under my tutelage. I put myself not in the big time. I never signed a contract. I traveled this whole country. But I put myself in a class with Jim Cornette, Bobby Heen, and J.J. Dillon, Classy Freddie Bat Blassie, Captain Lou Albano, Gary Hart. The list goes on and on of people who did what I did. Promos, hype man, putting your men over because it's not about going over. It's about getting over. I'm going to jump off all these other social media platforms. Meet me back here on YouTube. The GOC. Follow me on all social media platforms. At Big Daddy GOC. And the GOC stands for the Guardian of Chaos. That's on X, a.k.a. Twitter. On Instagram, it's the Guardian of Chaos. I have two accounts on Facebook. J Brony. That's right, J Brony, just like it sounds. For all you jabronis out there and geeks and virgins and nerds and neckbeards and mouth breathers. And no offense, man, gay fabe. Of course, on Gitter, Gab, Truth Social, Rumble. I cover it all in the IWC. And of course... Also on Facebook, Protigio Fidelis El Guardian, in honor of my heritage. You're not going to want to miss it, fans. Kick back and relax. Grab a beverage. Grab a snack. Uh, tell your friends. Phone a friend. The studios are empty today, unlike uh, the last time with story time when Paul Roman and Mario Mancini had the balls to show up here. I'm as confused as a baby at Hooters. But I'm certainly busier than a blow-up doll at a, frat, at a frat party. Go over to my community page and you will find out what's going on here. I just got back from the gym. I'm feeling tremendous. I'm getting in the shape of my life at the Big 6-0. The over-50 demo god. The old man brand. You see the content that we're pushing out. So I can't thank you guys enough for being here. Again, another edition, a special edition of The Art of Storytelling. Story time with the Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy. Oh, let's get right into it. Before I get into uh, the spotlight, uh, I'll be focusing on the John Arezzi in the spotlight, the original unbelievable pioneer in this business uh, for what he did for radio and for pro wrestling. I happen to come across this from over 20 years ago from the official site of... Uh, Big Daddy, the GOC, that's right, that's me. And just a couple of dates and things that I, I, I want to let you know. Again, remember the time frame. This is from like 25 years ago. But welcome to the official webpage of the Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy. Big Daddy, a licensed wrestler, pro wrestling manager, commentator, broadcaster, interviewer, bodyguard, bounty hunter, repo man, private investigator, uh, Behind the walls for 25 years, and of course, your independent pro wrestling manager of the year. Known worldwide, working for MWA, the NWA, the AWA, NWA New England, NWA Northeast, the NAWA, the CPW, and others, and currently negotiating with Power Pro Wrestling, Turnbuckle Championship, New Jersey Pro, Regional Championship, World Legion, Green Mountain, 
among many, many others at the time. And of course, my home currently at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. The fast talking manager prides himself on managing main eventers. Of the men he manages, the GOC, 75% are featured in a title match, most of those contests being main events. I've traveled with some of the top athletes in the game and featured numerous wrestling, television, and radio shows around the country. My personal quote and my outlook on life and career, there are three types of people in this world, as I said, those who don't know what happened, those who wonder what happened, and people like Big Daddy that make things happen. This site is dedicated to keeping you updated on the career of Big Daddy. And you see the navigation system, what I did back here in the days, and a big shout out to the late great spider, Danny Quirk, who was my webmaster who passed away at a very young age in the ring at a pro wrestling event here in the shadows of Titan Towers in the greater New England Tri-State Northeast area. I can never thank you enough. Rest in peace, Danny, a.k.a. the Spider, a great man and had a promising career as a wrestler. That's for damn sure. And you see on the official site, we had a main page, a bio, news, results, photos, a catalog, a, a column I wrote, uh, guests, viewer guests, and, and emails. A big time wrestlers have been banging down the door of the manager of the year, as well as the count door, heaven and hell of the ministry, public enemy, the head shrinkers, the bushwhackers, the pit bulls, just to name a few guys who have contacted the guardian of chaos, along with Jim the Anvil Neidhart, Yokozuna, Rikishi, Umaga, the list goes on and on. Over 23 or 25 WWE Hall of Famers, including many other Hall of Famers from the Independents, from the NWA, from WCW, from TNA, all the different wrestling Hall of Fames, Young Lions, Heroes, Legends, Rookies, and I'm proud of that. That's what you get here. You learn something when you come here. You get facts. You get history. You don't come here just to fuck around. And I apologize for the custom because I don't mean to. And I don't have to. It just happens. But that's what you get here. You come here to get educated. Not for any fantasy booking or what's going on in fantasy land. Reality and to learn actual facts. Speaking of actual facts, shout out to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because if he's for us, nobody can be against us. Stay strong in faith. Mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to anyone. And we know what's going on in current 2024. We're on a precipice of World War III. There's wars going all over the world. We're being invaded at the southern border. Who knows what's going to happen to the United States of America? Everything that's going on with the planet, the stars, the moon, the sun, unidentified objects, the economy, politics, racial division, civil war. It's getting ugly. And we don't know if it's going to get any better. That's why Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. And I mean that. And that's a shoot. Uh, so before I get on to, uh, and this, this might be a two-parter today, because I ha happen to find these uh, this random thing for, like, from, like I said, in the 90s, uh, from my old uh, website, I believe it was even on Web TV, AOL, if you look at the different things on here. Uh, the, the, let me see, what else did we have on here? Big Daddy's currently in, negotiation, uh, in negotiations, remember the time frame here, with former WXW. Negotiating with the WWF champion, the Iron Sheik. God rest his soul. Extreme Pro Wrestling. All World Wrestling. Music City. Dutch Mantel with the WWC in Puerto Rico. Several NWA territories. Tommy Dreamer with ECW. Terry Taylor with WCW. And Bruce Pritchard and Jim Ross and J.J. Dillon with the WWF. The WWF contacted me about managing in 1994, and that was from James J. Dillon, who when I ran into him at the 20 New England uh, Fan Fest in the class of 2019 New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, which I was inducted into, I showed him the card and the letter from the WWF. He said he never saw it when he was the VP of Talent Relations. So who the fuck knows what goes on here in Stanford Tire, Stanford uh, in uh, Titan Towers? Because we know what's going on now with VKM, the piece of shit. And I'm not judging anybody or uh, playing guilty, a uh, judge, jury, or an executioner. But the facts are the facts. Where to smoke, there's fire. And this has been going on since the 80s. And here we are in 2024. It's still going on. Got to be some credibility to it. So I'll let the facts speak for themselves. 
and 94, the WWF dropped the ball. I've been called the most dangerous manager in the game because I've been seen consulting with greats from the past, the future, Jim Cornette, Captain Lou Albano, Bill Alfonso, the legendary Gary Hart. The list goes on and on, guys. This is just partial of what was reported on my site. Again, I wish I could find the date on this. It says June of 2000. So that's 24 years ago. Aside from being an extremely active man in the wrestling world, yours truly, Big Daddy is a bounty hunter, formerly with Dr. D. David Schultz, Bridgeport High Court, Hartford High Court, a repo man, a private investigator, as we said, 25 years behind the walls, and a personal bodyguard. I was seen as a bodyguard in work shows and events for such people in the industry as LL Cool J, Big Daddy Kane, Slick Rick, Metallica, Jimmy Buffett, the Steve Miller Band, my old buddy the Viseras and Crucible, Pat Travers, among many others. No stranger to the media, fans. Voted top five personalities in New England. I've been featured on such shows as the Jerry Springer Show, Talk Soup, Ringside Seat, The Extreme Wrestling Hour, PWI, The Hardcore Wrestling Hour, Center Ring, Slams, Sports Talk, Inside Wrestling, Ringside Seat View, Worldwide Pro Wrestling, and my own Big Daddy Show, which I had in the 90s. Which was thrown off the year by the FCC due to a difference of opinions. And then you know that... Uh, in 2018, 2019, I was back on national cable TV throughout the whole state of the Constitution State here in the shadows of Titan Towers, among many other venues and, and videos on, on, on pay-per-view. So just to give you uh, different things that I got here that I wanted to show you guys that I thought you would be really interested in. Uh, I might have done this a few years back when I, uh, I found some more of the uh, information but I just want to throw it out there for you guys. And like I said, this might be a part two because we're going into story time, storytelling. And I'm going to be going through Matt Memories or for the Spotlight Observer, uh, WWF, John Arezzi, so on and so forth. So you're not going to want to miss that. So if I make this into a two-parter, don't go anywhere, man. Uh, the bio back then for the GOC, that's me. 6'2", 325 pounds. I am down to 215, 220 right now. Hometown, we know, the Constitution State, the Nutmeg State, and the shadows of Titan Towers, if you will. Titles held besides my Boon Squad, your Manager of the Year, 93, 94, so on and so forth. Long before you were a gleam in your daddy's eyes, boys and girls. Trained by the legendary Briefly Tough Tony Altamore, the Stanford Stomper, and of course my old buddy who whipped me from pillar to post, and that would be Mario Mancini at the Quest facility. Strong man, super strong man, Ken Fontano of the Muscle Factory, who damn near benched and the bars were crippling 660 pounds and actually went for the 705 of Ted Arcidi. And of course... My training in the self-defense by self-defense specialist Randy Roach, who was the lead trainer in the state of Connecticut. Friends with Billy Blank, so on and so forth. Do your research of the people who I was trained by, along with going to Rocky Jones' school, Gino Caruso, Jason Knight, Iron Mike Sharp, Johnny Rods. I was at all of them at one time or another, learning, training, picking brains, that's what you get here from the Guardian of Chaos. Among my many feuds with Rikishi, Umaga, Yokozuna, Just Incredible, King Kong Bundy, The Bushwhackers, Roughhouse Ralph Mosca, The Jackmaster John Diamond, Jake the Snake Roberts, The Condor, Tough Tony DeVito of the Baldies, Jason fucking Knight. The list goes on and on and on of the men, including the legendary... Terry Funk. And that's just the partial list. We'll be here all day. You guys know my influences from back in the day. Obviously, Bruno San Martino, the legendary Valiant Brothers, that's right, Luscious Johnny, Handsome Jimmy, even Gentleman Jerry, the magnificent, the original rock, Don Morocco, Jesse the Body Ventura, Animal and Hawk, the Road Warriors, Freebird Michael Hayes, 
obviously my connection going back 40 plus years with the Samoan dynasty, all the way back to Little Sam, the Tonga kid, to Junior Rikishi, obviously, Ekmo, Eddie, Umaga Fatu, Rodney, Yokozuna, Afa, Sika, Lloyd, aka LA Smooth, my legendary feuds with uh, Jason Knight with Homicide, Balls Mahoney, all the guys from ECW, the feud with the Dudley Boys. That's what you get here on this fucking channel. I want you guys to remember that. In order to get respect, you have to start with respecting yourself. Once you do that, you open other people's minds to respecting you. Other people that I've managed, I, even the independent guys, everyone from the executioners to my old buddy, Purdy, Kurt, Adonis, Trooper Gilmore up at New World Wrestling Stream. Two cool members, we know that. Against Grandmaster Sex Day, Brian Christopher, and of course with Rikishi. The Baldy mouthpiece, we already said, Tough Tony DeVito. The Mercenaries, Corporal Punishment. I already talked about the Jackmaster, Rex Lethal. The Real Deal, Joel Davis. Bad Attitude, Bobby Moran. The Disciples of Apocalypse, the Annihilation Crew, the Power Company, Kevin Kelly, a.k.a. Kevin Landry, Julio Fantastico, De Niro Sanchez, Salvatore Sincere, The Patriot, Public Enemy, Pat Tanaka, Chris Candido, the Giant Primo Carnera. I'm name dropping like a mofo right here because there ain't no half stepping. We already talked about the Anvil, Yokozuna. I mean, I'm repeating here, but that's what I do. What else do we have here? We have some some dates from over 20 years ago of upcoming events and where I was back in the summer of 2000. As you can see, if you can look at different things here, I'll put a little close-up. I don't want to get too crazy. And I guess this will have to be a two-parter for story time. Upcoming events for the Guardian of Chaos Big Daddy. June 13th. 2000, Big Daddy Continental Headquarters in the Constitution State. The Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy, will be taking a shoot-style interview for Over the Top TV out of Las Vegas, Nevada, a weekly wrestling TV show featuring wrestling interviews and segments of pro wrestling legends, superstars, and rising independents. The show is currently in production with Silver Star Media and on the air on the WB Network in Las Vegas. And will simulcast on the web, and I believe uh, at the time the info and air dates were at www.overthetoptv.com. June 16th, 2000, the WWA at the Boston, Massachusetts Armory, along with the Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy, the GOC, will be the man from the dark side, one of my enemies, primetime Brian Lee. The 600-pound former two-time WWF champion, Yokozuna. The Jackmaster, John Diamond. Mike Hollow. The Garibaldis. Tom Brandy. And all the World Wrestling Alliance superstars. June 17, 2000. WWE again at the Boston Armory in Boston, Massachusetts. Along with the GOC Big Daddy once again. The man from the dark side, primetime Brian Lee. Yokozuna. John Diamond, Mike Howell, the Garibaldis, Tom Brandy, Salvatore Sincere. June 22nd, 2000s, Chair Shots radio show on WBLQ 88.1 in Rhode Island. Big Daddy rocks the airwaves in the Ocean State on New England's top-rated wrestling show, Chair Shots. Long before Busted Open Radio, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Let that marinate with host Brent Fusaro and Hot Rod Siciliano. Also on the show will be former WWF WCW superstar Brutus the Barber Beefcake, a.k.a. Ed Leslie. June 30th, 2000. The NAWA in New York City. The Big Daddy World Tour takes a bite out of the Big Apple. Along with the Guardian of Chaos will be WCW Superstar, ECW World Heavyweight Champion, the franchise Shane Douglas from the Triple Threat. Seven-foot giant Primo Carnera, a.k.a. Big Guido. 
from the FBI. And you folks and fans and guys and gals, you see what happens here when I start talking and you know my background. The heavy chains just come off the GOC and I'm going to put them right back on because that's how I feel. It's my background and we're wrapped up in chains, but I'm always willing to break them. Getting back to Primo Carnera, Big Guido, also in the WWF and ECW, you remember him from Don't Mess With The Zohan as the huge, ginormous bouncer that picked up Sandler and carried him out in that scene in that Don't Mess With The Zohan. You gotta go check it out. Also on that card, Jackmaster John Diamond, Roughhouse Ralph Masta, Mosca, Sweet Destiny, a.k.a. Little Genie, the lovely Kara, and the legendary Fabulous Moolah and Mae Young. That's right, fans. This is what was going down 24 years ago in my career. We even have an interview here. I did an interview monthly on the website, On the Road with Big Daddy, the GOC. Questions of how did you get into pro wrestling? How long have you been in the business? I noticed you were contacted by the World Wrestling Federation in 1994. What happened? Who were you going to be programmed with? And we'll, so we'll take that question. And I responded, uh, yes, in 1994, I got in touch with the WWF. I was in touch with J.J. Dillon, who was the booker at the time. They liked my work and said they would get back to me, but obviously it didn't work out. That's okay, because I may have not been ready at that point, but I certainly was. I mean, I was 30 years old already at the time, a little old and for what I did, and then as they transitioned from the traditional pro wrestling manager to tits and ass and used eye candy and valets as, far as, as uh, part of the grapplers going back and forth to the ring. But they weren't taking the fucking bumps. They weren't coming out two and three times. They didn't do what I did old school, as I said. And it kind of put a little damper on the career. We're lucky that we have guys right now like Prince Nana, Paul Heyman, the legend. But are any of them uh, taking the fucking bumps? Because that's what I did. Two or three a match. At least a couple of matches a night. From the legends, the superstars. Let that sink in. All the videos are right here on the channel. Been on every show with Kurt Angle, Christian Cage, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Kevin Nash, Sid Justice. The list goes on and on. Do I need to say any more for credibility? But I enjoy looking back on this history. Again, I stumbled upon it down here uh, in the bunker. So back to the, to the question, the interview on the road with the GOC. Now I am and there is no one like Big Daddy in the independent or the pro wrestling circuit. Within the last six months, remember the time frame, I've received calls from Terry Taylor, Bruce Pritchard, Kevin Kelly, spoken with Tommy Dreamer, Jared King Lawler, Dusty Rhodes, and they all respect and like me and seem to like my old school style. So I just wanted to, a lot of people say, Chaos, you never give us your background, you're humble, you're always putting everybody else over. Well, that's my fucking job is to put other people over. That's what I do. So people ask me, well, give us a segment about your career. Tell us something you did, who you were involved with. And I humbly back down all the time because I don't want to talk about me. Nobody wants to hear about me. But I'm going to indulge the emails and inboxes that I got from you guys. And so uh, another question by IGN, because that's who I was uh, interviewed for on the road with uh, Big Daddy, the Guardian of Chaos, back here in 2000. IGN was, was, was the media outlet. You served as a bodyguard to many well-known musicians. Did that, did that help in any way get you into the pro wrestling business? Now, you know the whole rock and wrestling correct, uh, connection back in the uh, mid-80s. MTV, war to settle the score, brawl to settle it all, leading into WrestleMania. You're well aware of that. And this is to quote the GOC, yours truly. I've worked for many bands such as LL Cool J, Metallica, where we literally saved several lives during a riot. Jimmy Buffett, Steve Miller, Big Daddy Kane, and many others from time to time, too numerous to mention. 
work in the dressing rooms, not allowing anyone in, walking them back and forth to the stage and standing there, making sure nobody jumps on. That's what I did as my other job, besides 25 years behind the walls. That's what you get here, and that's why I was valuable to people, because I didn't wear one hat. I wore five, and I served in many capacities, and that's why I got paid what I got paid, usually more than the workers, the grapplers, the stars themselves. And that's why I traveled this whole fucking country on somebody else's dime. My hotel, my airfare, my travel expenses, food, cars, whatever I wanted, liquor. Liquor, I don't even know her. Well, I'm at the rated PG show. I mean, forgive me for that. Get work. Don't get offended, man. To work. I also co-managed a band with my buddies, the Viseras, Gary, Natty, Michael, Christopher, Unbelievable, uh, the MVP project, a Crucible, aka Second Wind, uh, a local band that really hit it big. So to to work with Crucible and the Viser team Visera and being a part of that was the, one of the greatest things I ever did in my life. True brothers, true legends. Christopher, Gary, Natty, rest in peace. Michael, the whole Visera family. Really unbelievable people, and man, were they talented. Talk about a family that traveled on the road in the tour bus overseas. One did sound, one did backups, one did security. All played in the band. Michael is unbelievable. MVP project. And of course, Chris on the bass. I, we worked everywhere uh, to opening up for Blue Oyster Cult and Journey and the Tubes and Foreigner uh, to even the legendary Toad's Place. I can't thank you guys enough for everything you've done for me in my life and being so generous and allowing me to work with you and rub elbows with all these people. The music industry had not been all that helpful in my wrestling career, although it was a great experience. So that's the interview from, uh, from IGN, On the Road. And then, of course, what promotions I was working for in, in 2000. You already knew the different ones that I was negotiating with and where I ended up. These were some of the local ones and the better ones from from Northeast Wrestling to the Millennium Wrestling Association, the AWA Superstars, several NWA territories, the World Wrestling Alliance, and then, of course, trying to get into World Legion with Harley Race, Turnbuckle with Dusty Rhodes, the WWF, ECW, WCW, sending my tapes to guys like uh, Randy Hales in the Memphis area and Power Plant and, and Power Pro and everything you could think of, every organization. I left no stone unturned, especially with the help of my brothers, Heaven and Hell, the twin turbos who were in the WWF, and that would be Larry and Steve, unbelievable, and their group, the World Wrestling Zone, out of the Chicago, Indiana, Arizona, Nevada area, they were unbelievable grapplers, two guys that are jacked, ripped, buffed, like shredded wheat, twin turbo, Heaven and Hell. And we had some times in Las Vegas and in Chicago and in Indiana, and they hooked me up with working with Terry Funk. And then uh, the debut of, of uh, TNT or TNA or NWA announcer, whoever he was on MTV Tough Enough, Josh Matthews. I mean, it really was incredible, and I can't thank heaven and hell, Larry and Steve, the two twins, who are one of the most amazing craftsmen when it comes to tile work and carpentry and building and remodeling. Unbelievable men, unbelievable brothers, and I'm humble that they used me and allowed me to work for them, and they treated me like Elvis. God bless you guys. So those were the different groups back then, and this is, uh, and I remember that the twins took me out to Chicago and Indiana. I don't think we went to Vegas on this trip, and this was nine a month after 9/11, October of uh, of 2001. Uh, the twins flew me out uh, to Chicago. Uh, we did a couple of shots, and it was only a month after 9-11. Just think how crazy and apprehensive we were back then. Again, I can't thank you guys enough, and that was one of the shots that we did. And, of course, through uh, not only the AWA superstars and Dale Gagne, that's another story for another time, uh, but especially Larry and Steve, the twins, is how I got to work with a 19-year-old Justin Price a.k.a. Justin Roberts, who I ended up getting on the Jerry Springer show when I was booking for Toby Yoshimura, and I was booking for the Jerry Springer show when I was on there, as we talked about before. The videos are here with the Iron Sheik, 
uh, Anthony from the Pitbulls, uh, Little Genie, Sweet Destiny from WCW, of course, several adult film stars. We don't want to talk about that. And my old buddy, Big Mike Angus, from up there in the Great North, uh, six foot four, three hundred and fifty pounder. My buddy Angus. Yeah, Benny, talking about you, brother. I love you, man. It's been a long time. We had one heck of a trip. The Crowbar, the House of Blues, the Sheik's Hotel Room. I, that's another story for another time. Let me not get crazy. So those those are the people that, that really helped me out. So getting back on to different questions and who I work for and locally, the next question by IGN is, you were backstage for the WWF's Raw is War event a week ago and recently for ECW's Living Dangerously pay-per-view. Any contract talks with them? How about WCW? Now, these are the questions. Remember, this is the summer of 2000. So we're coming up on almost 24 years ago. And of course, Big Daddy's... I don't want to talk in third person. Me! Yes, I was seen backstage at several WWF and ECW events. I am current in ongoing talks with the WWF. Now remember the original tapes in 94 interviews being thrown out of the office up there in Stanford basically with my big Lincoln Town car trying to get in. Not thrown off, but hey, hey, hey bro, we, are, we got your information. We're going to deliver it. So that's another story for another time. So just, just to let you guys know the, the facts behind that. So yes, I'm current in ongoing talks with the WWF, ECW, and WCW. Now this is 2000. So that's six years after initially, again, later in my, in, in my career for what I do, uh, you know, considering that at 21, 22, uh, 21 is when I first started this journey, meeting the Tonga Kid, the Samoans, and, and breaking bread with them in 1983 while working at Daniels and Montego Bay as one of the head doormen, and then with Mario and Tony Altamori and, and all the ilk, uh, uh, Seth Cohen and, and A.J. Petrucci and Rita Chatterton and all the legends, uh, even nephew Rob Altamori uh, that were down there at the Quest facility, all the, Kenny Passarillo, although brief, uh, you get the idea. And then, of course, making my debut once I got into the behind-the-walls career, bounty hunting with David Schultz. I'm repeating, I get it, but I want to give you the full spectrum here. And then making my managerial debut in 1991. Of course, you know, in the late 80s with my buddy Lenny, who's now out in law enforcement, traveled to uh, uh, Baltimore, uh, Virginia, uh, down south in the whole mid-Atlantic area with the Samoan SWAT team at the time, Big Sam and, and Junior, a.k.a. Rikishi and, and, and uh, Samu and being able to hang out with guys like Ron Simmons and Butch Reed, uh, Animal and Hawk, uh, uh, Jack uh, Victory at the time. Uh, of course, you know, the SST, uh, Freebird Michael Hayes we traveled with. What a, what a st what stories. And uh, all great guys. Nothing illegal, nothing heinous, but the boys being the boys. And I remember leaving the Baltimore Arena with the SST and Michael Hayes, uh, who were in the middle of that legendary feud back then with the Road Warriors in that run. Just people throwing beer cans and bottles at the car and people trying to jump on the hoods of the rental car just to get out of there. And then doing going on 95, doing about 100 miles an hour with Big Sam. I love your brother. And uh, he was driving with his knee and doing rolling up, uh, you know, his homemade uh, smoke uh, while driving. Unbelievable. It just it really was it, just to give you guys of the backstory, and that's in the late 80s. I, I want to say 88, 89 in that time frame. So being back in state, I showed up uh, at the shows, a lot of WWF, WWF, you like it when I mumble, stumble, and rumble, ECW, WCW, all the different shows, because he got invited. And I've always said it, and I say it today, 2024, and the young students and greenhorns and, and rookies and, and, and even some of the vets who are much younger than me, 20 years younger than me, but are still active. It's important to always have your gear. Show up at other shows, even if you're not booked. Show up and be a fan. Scout. Do your homework, but always be prepared. Network, whether it's in the bar, the club, the restaurant, the hotel, on the road. Go with people. Learn from the veterans. R learn from your peers. And some of the best I ever did, because you have to have talent too. You've got to be able to perform. It's doing networking. 
public relations, so to speak. Getting people and letting people get to know the real you. Oh, we like chaos. We like the guardian of chaos. Big Daddy's a great guy. He's a lot of fun to be around. We could trust him. And he's got fucking talent. I'll work with him. That's how it works. And I say that all the time. I don't give out advice nowadays. You don't want to offend anybody. A lot of people don't want to take it. They say, oh, the old guy, blah, 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 blah. still want to be. No, no, no. That's not the way it is. And let's get this straight. I never worked for the big three, the big four. AWA is, is what you could say. N-A-W-A, N-E-W, W-W-A, all the N-W-A territories. Those were the bigger groups that, that I've gotten to. And again, uh, close to 100 different promotions in my career. You know, I've probably worked in, 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 in over 20 or 25 different states here in the continental U.S. And have been down to Mexico. So getting back to the story, I had a chance to talk to everyone from Shane McMahon to Jerry Lawler, and I'm repeating some of it, but this is the interview, Dusty Rhodes, workers and stars at the time, like The Rock, the Dudley Boys, who I ended up working with many times, Lillian Garcia, who was pure class, Ivory, another great lady, unbelievable rapper, and one tough chick, obviously Brian Christopher, Grandmaster Sex A, Rikishi, couldn't thank him enough for the Samoans. Rikishi and I have, have become like family and friends over 20 years, and that was 20 years ago, so now we're talking 40 years. They've helped me out more than once, the Samoan dynasty, the ultimate Usus, the ones, the bloodline, our true legends, all the way back to the high paramount chief, Peter Maivia. Then we go on here with IGN. Where would you prefer to be at the time? Remember the time frame. The three big ones. WWF, WCW, ECW. My answer. I really have no preference. WWF is on top in the ratings. I grew up on the old Worldwide Wrestling Federation and the NWA. All three have great talent. I just want a shot, a chance to prove myself. To show that's where I belong. So I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, sorry, Rock, Wayne. As you can see, the well, it's barely covered up by the boa back there, but the Rock and I and Justin Roberts and the twins, uh, Heaven and Hell, and the, the illustrious Johnny Stewart from the AWA, Dale Gagne, uh, I believe uh, my old buddy there, Konnichiwa, Origato, Chaos-san, Tony Myers, uh, got a chance to work in 2004, when Rock was still on uh, the precipice of who he became as Rocky Maivia and Dwayne Johnson now, and the ultimate top box office draw that he is, seeing that we're going into WrestleMania uh, 40. We got a chance to do an opening in Bally's. It was in Brooklyn where thousands of people lined up. I got to meet and hang out with Jackie Mason on that trip, as well as going back into the city and hanging out at uh, WWF. Uh, at the restaurant there and having several meetings or hoping to get into the big time. So, uh, you know, hanging out even earlier than that in the 80s at Mickey Mantle's on, on, on Park West South, I believe it was, South Park, Park West. Uh, unbelievable getting to talk to the mix. So that's the nostalgia. Hanging out at Shea Stadium, Scores, a Yankee Stadium. But just to give you guys a hint, uh, you know, most of my boys back then were from Greenwich or Rye or Westchester. I was the one that, you know, came from nothing, uh, has nothing and still owns most of it. Well, you guys get the picture. I'll let it be self-deprecating. Uh, again, on with the interview here. If you could manage one wrestler or tag team, who would it be? It's from IGN. A good question. I said I've managed many stars in the past. Again, I'm name dropping here. Rikishi, Yoko, The Anvil, Tony DeVito, The Baldies, Julio Fantastico, Sal Sincere, Kevin Landry, Jackmaster John Diamond, The Power Company, DOA, Giant Primo, Ekmo Fatu, and the list goes on and on. But if it could be one wrestler I answered back then, it would be Ric Flair, who I met at the Boston Garden and the legendary Bull Montana, you know, it's a little crazy. Bull is bull. You gotta let bull be bull. Introduced me to Ric Flair at the Boston Garden as Kevin Sullivan's tag team partner. Now, Sullivan and I have been on the same shows before, but I never worked with Kevin Sullivan. Certainly wasn't his tag team partner. Same events? Yes. Have I met him? Yes. Would he know me from a hole in the wall? Probably not. No. But it was nice to be able to talk to Flair and uh, got a 
gets to see the. Uh, I just happen to look, man. You know, I'm not talking about the helicopter, but you guys get the drift. So those are the stories, and that would have been Ric Flair. And if it had a chance to be a tag team, the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, Animal and Hawk, they were the dominant competitors of their time and perhaps all time. And then had an event in the Constitution State where the Road Warriors and Moolin May Young for a private uh, independent organization. I have the poster around here somewhere. Didn't get a chance to manage them. Rest in soul. Rest in peace. Good men, Animal and Hawk. Just think uh, originally meeting them in the late 80s and then in the mid-2000s, this close to working and managing them. No offense, Ellering, you weren't there. Uh, but it didn't happen. I see you ringside is how I ended it. We uh, continue here. We're 40 minutes in. I hope you guys are enjoying story time here and going and reflecting on my career. The Guardian of Chaos World Tour, summer of 2000, continues. It's been in full effect, showing up in cities and towns throughout the country with his full complement of the Goon Squad. Established stars of Big Daddy has recently been in the corner of the Jackmaster from the Pittsburgh Steel Team, ECW. You guys get it? Developmental for the WWE. Now owns Bad Ass Tattoo down in Florida. That's right, Bad Ass. Unbelievable. The Jackmaster. And, uh, you want a tattoo when you're in the state of Florida, you go hook up uh, my buddy, uh, the Jackmaster. I don't think he calls it bad as tattoo anymore. That's pretty bad that I can't remember it offhand. My apologies, Diamond. Uh, the list goes on. Uh, to the Patriot, WWF, WCW star, but not Del Wilkes who I did perform with on the, the Green Room when we were doing that show. Adele Wilkes was one heck of a guy from what the little I got to know him and speak with him. But this was uh, Tom Brandy, the Patriots. Uh, WCW Tag Team, the power company. You saw them many times on Thursday Night Thunder or uh, the WCW Thunder program, I believe. Uh, Bad Attitude, Kevin Landry. You've seen him on Metal. You've seen him on Jack for WWE, WWF. Uh, they formed an unbelievable six-man tag team that have dominated the Northeast. We squared off against uh, two-time champion Yokozuna, formerly under my leadership. Original ECW player, Jason Knight. ECW World Heavyweight Champion, Just Incredible. The Impact Players. Triple Crown Champion, the Hardcore Hippie, a.k.a. Nick Richards. The Notorious One and the Goon Squad have recently terrorized everywhere from Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, and currently several tours of the Pack Rim before we went to the Midwest. Now remember, 2000, just 24 years ago, currently feuding with wrestling radio personalities, as I said, Brent Fusaro, Hot Rod Siciliano of Chair Shots, WBLQ, 88.1. I got my start in radio when I was 16 years old. 17. WLNV 90.1 in Connecticut. How about that? The World Tour 2000 rolls on. Paulie G's Cafe. Paulie G, if you don't know. Paulie G, Paulie Gurria, Ivan Gurria, sons of the unbelievable legend, road agent, former WWF Tag Team Champion, Tough Tony Gurria. Big Daddy was on hand to present an eight, now this is January 3rd, March, April 30th, 2000, to present an 8x10 autograph, framed photo, an official Big Daddy jersey to owner Paul Gurria, son of WWF great Tony Gurria, being placed on the wall of fame. Here's the caveat about Paulie G's Cafe. That they had a wall of fame because of their association and who their father was and all the guys when they came to New Haven, Hartford, the, every time they came to the area, it's right down the road in Stanford, they always stopped the Pauly G's. And when I used to leave behind the walls, plus my personal relationship with the Gorillas, would stop in. So I was honored to be uh, able to end up on the Pauly G's wall of fame. Uh, which really is a legendary place for the WWF. Home of the WWF Smackdown Brawl at Pauly G's, which was taped on 
May 9th, May 9th of 2000. It's on a network at Paulie G's, and it was aired on May 11th of 2000 on the, on, on the network for the WWF SmackDown show. The brawl involved the big boss man, Bull Buchanan, the Acolytes, remember? And the Wall of Fame also includes autographed photos of such superstars as The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker, Ken Shamrock, Vader, Paul Bearer, and yours truly. Unfortunately, believe it or not, Paulie G's burned down uh, years later. What an unbelievable place in a local landmark of history. Uh, they had a fire, it didn't burn down. The cafe is still there. No longer Paulie G's, but it's still there right across from the golf course. It really is on Route 10. Unbelievable. We roll on March of March 30th of 2000. The Jerry Springer Show on NBC in Chicago, Illinois. The Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy, on the infamous Jerry Springer Show was rebroadcast on national TV with former WWF champion the Iron Sheik, Pitbull Number Two, Anthony, and WCW female wrestler Little Genie, aka Sweet Destiny. Big Daddy was seen chasing a Springer guest, my buddy, Benny Angus, through the NBC studios out into the mean streets of Chicago with head of security from the Springer show, Steve Wilkos, the former Chicago policeman, was no match for the 300-pound madman from the East Coast. We move on. March 24th and 25th of 2000. The World Wrestling Alliance in Melrose and Gardner, Massachusetts. The GOC Big Daddy made his WWE debuts on consecutive nights. The most notorious manager in the business expanded his stable to the stars by leading the number one tag team contenders in the WWE, the Wrecking Crew, against the Garibaldi brothers. Daddy did his usual dirty work at ringside, as, as you guys know if you've seen the videos supporting my crew and leading them to victory, only to have the WWA commissioner, the legendary Killer Kowalski, reverse the ref's decision. Daddy and Killer squared off with the Guardian of Chaos getting a boot to the midsection and a double axe handle to the back of the head by the legend Killer Kowalski. I was also in the corner that night of Kevin Landry. You've seen him in the WWF, as I said. I'm jacked and on metal as Kevin Landry. It was Bad Attitude Kevin Kelly. Here for this, these purposes. Against Mike Steele. Now Kelly and the GOC overwhelmed Steele with a massive a one. Getting the clean pin, meaning Kevin Landry. Big Daddy took on Jack, took out Jack Master Jam, Don, Jam, John Diamond. You know what Bully Ray said to me if you watch this show. Get the Guardian of Chaos five spots. He'll fuck up four of them. I consider that to be a compliment. Again, to my point of doing double duty, single duty, triple duty, taking the fucking bumps of what I did as a manager. Also that night, Big Daddy and Jackmaster John Diamond, also in the stable. And clearly I was out of my mind when both Kelly and Diamond agreed to match up. He, I actually... I'm talking in third term because this was my website, as we said, back 25 years ago. I'm already, uh, you know, a, a damn near a, a decade into my career, my journey. I don't want to say career. He actually begged his two titans not to do this. Both warriors pushed the big man over the top rope and out of the ring. It was truly a classic bout and both men exchanging maneuvers and crunching power moves. Now remember, Diamond and Landry were in my tutelage. My goon squad went against each other. I wanted nothing to do with it that night. With Kelly standing over the Jackmaster, a mystery woman, they always show up, in defensive diamond. Of course, Landry, Big Daddy, we tried to physically restrain her. She was a lunatic. I picture 10 uh, class, uh, cats with claws trying to scratch her eyes out. So she rolled up into the ring. Both men left diamond, turned their attention to the, this mystery woman. You know, we had to try to defend ourselves. What are you going to do against a, a lunatic? She fell to the canvas. Okay? We were berating her. I'll be honest. The attention goes back to Diamond. You can't do anything to a woman. Not like they do now with this intergender bullshit in 2024. We didn't believe in it back then. Occasional. Mixed tag team. Special events. For shock value. 
but with domestic views and what's going on now, and this is what we're doing in the pro wrestling world, different times, man, different times. So as we turn our attention back to Diamond, we started putting to the boots to the Jackmaster, raising our arms in victory. And at that point, the mystery woman comes up and crawls up out of nowhere and double nut shots us. That's my nutcracker. We were singing soprano. And then Diamond rolled up Kelly for the upset win. What does this mean for Big Daddy and his future with the Jackmaster? Also appearing in the main event on both shows and seen negotiating with the GOC was the man from the dark side, prime time Brian Lee, better known as Chains and the Disciples of, of Apocalypse. And he was the second Undertaker in the WWF, the fake Undertaker that you hear about all the time. Also WWF competitors, Mike Hollow, Doink the Hardcore Clown, Luis Ortiz, Slick Wagner Brown, the Hardcore Hippie, Jason Rage, and Trey the Smooth Operator. We go on. March 7th. March 20th. My bad. 2000. The Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy, once again invaded national TV on the cable news network. I would never do it now. On CNN. The Turner owned 24-hour news network and was a showing. they were showing a special on outrageous clips including the GOC Big Daddy on national TV. A publicity debut, at least that's what we're calling it now, no NDAs anymore, on the infamous Jerry Springer show. Ended up being clip of the week and clip of the month on Talk Soup on E! Entertainment Television. Holy cremoli. Coming up on uh, uh, 51 minutes here, fans, so I hope you're enjoying this episode. It's probably going to be an hour before I get to this. I didn't get to story time with Matt Memories, but you got story time about the GOC. March 19th, 2000, the NWA at the Millennium Theater. In the main event, Big Daddy and the NWA Tag Team Champions, the Power Company, faced their toughest challenge to date against ECW stars Tony DeVito, the mouthpiece of the Baldies, Jason from the ECW Impact Players, and the mad dog Mike Bell. Rest in peace, Bell. During the three-way MWA heavyweight title bout between Kevin Kelly, Kevin Kelly, Kevin Landry, Hardcore Hippie, and Lip Slipinski, DeVito, Jason, and Mad Dog rushed the ring, cleaned house on all of them, and destroyed the MWA security team using the infamous kendo stick, Singapore cane. That's what we call it, a Singapore cane. And they cleared the ring area. DeVito called out the tag champs stating he wanted to settle their long-standing feud. The GOC shows up suddenly, appears in the entrance, and mocked Jason Knight by posing. That's right, I did this, the best abs in the game. At which point he stated that his champions would take out the extreme and out-wrestle the ECW stars because my guys were from WCW. The Guardian of Chaos stated, you want the power company? You got him. It's on the video, it's on the network. Remember, it's 20 plus years ago. I turned my back to the entrance and all eyes and the cameras were focused on the stage. As the smoke covered the stage, lights flashing and the music pumping, the twins, the power company, came out of nowhere from behind. The assault was on. Big Daddy, yours truly, bolted into the fray, waiting on Jason Knight, who swung his Singapore cane at me. Of course, I ducked. I was nimble back then for 300 pounds, and you missed me, Jason. But unfortunately, uh, after I kicked Jason in the abs, he grabbed the cane, and I swung it at him. I, I grabbed the cane, swung it at him. He ducked, attempted the big boot to the abs, only to have it blocked and leveled by a spinning roundhouse kick from Jason, the impact player on the side of the bald cranium. Big Daddy attempted to slow the pace by leaving the ringside area. Once the twins got back in the ring, both teams once again had near pinfalls until Jason jumped into the ring, breaking up the pin by caning one of the power company. The ref called for the bell, indicating a disqualification. I grabbed the titles, started celebrating with the power company because we had the pinfall. While the power company and Big Daddy, yours truly, faced the cameras. I don't have to keep saying that, do I? And the crowd went crazy. It's on the network. 
DeVito, Mad Dog, Jason grabbed two metal chairs. Jason with the kendo stick stood behind the three of us. And when we turned around, we were leveled and left bloodied by our extreme opponents. Jason set up a near unconscious GOC and proceeded to cane me in the family jewels. Another nutcracker on a different night. I'm all made no potatoes. Do you see why now? Well, myself and the champ staggered back to the locker room while they chanted ECW and we retained the titles. How about that? Well, of course, cheer shots, WBLQ 88.1 FM uh, on uh, March 16th. Unbelievable, rocking the airwaves on the FCC on a live broadcast on a special uh, top-rated, the New England's top-rated wrestling show. Let that sink in, busted open fans. I told you with Brent Fisaro, Rod Siciliano, uh, talking about the family of superstars, the current MWA Tag Team Champions, the WCW Tag Team, the Power Company, number one contender and WWF competitor Kevin Kelly, uh, two cool members, Rikishi Fatu, Grandmaster Sexay, uh, DeVito from ECW, the seven-foot giant Primo, Yoko, Anvil Neidhart, the, the Julio Fantastico, the, the Iron Sheik, the Pitbull. We were taught on a number one uh, show on, on Jerry Springer at the time. Over 16 or 6 million people. Whatever it was in that fucking range. Do the research, the analytics. This is what we talked about. And of course, my association, and if you've ever seen it around, American Made back in the day out of Malvern, Pennsylvania. One of my sponsors back then when I was in the business and active. The Big Daddy Clothing Company. Do your research. All the stars and entertainers work for them and yours truly. They outfitted me with tons of gear wherever I went, and that was the deal. They really looked out for me. I can't thank you enough. Brandon, Big, da Big Daddy Clothing Company out of Malvern, Pennsylvania. At the time, was BigDaddies.com. Don't do it now. I think it goes to a porn site. And uh, then the very next week, Sable. How about that? Uh, Playboy Sable, Brock Lesnar. Sable, Rena Merrill. I was supposed to be in the show, no show, but it was on the very next week. So, uh, I don't know. Would have had a chance to hang out with Sable. I wonder what Brock has to say about that. We move on here on Chaos Corner. Story time on the GOC. The YouTube channel. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Longer than I wanted to. We're going to go over an hour. This is going to be an epic, classic, historic, if you wanted to fucking know about me. ECW Living Dangerously, Danbury, Connecticut, March 12, 2000. The Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy, and my head assistant and bodyguard, Dr. Dick Nasty, were seen at Living Dangerously at the sold-out Extreme Pay-Per-View. Big Daddy was recognized by many of the fans. This is my site reporting, not me. Uh, checking in with Tony DeVito of the Baldies, reminiscing with Big Sal E. Graziano of the FBI, and negotiating with the American Dream, Dusty Rose. Rest in peace, Dream. The Midnight Rider. Is the GOC heading south for WCW? Now remember, I also ended up negotiating with Dusty when he left the WWF, WCW, and was running Turnbuckle. Do your research. We move on. March 11th, 2000. Now you see, that's I wasn't just a weekend warrior. I worked several times a month all over the country. Northeast Wrestling in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Over 1,500 fans witnessed an action-packed night of pro wrestling. The main event saw ECW star Tony DeVito of the Baldies team up with 7-foot giant Primo Carnera and the Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy, against no gimmicks needed Chris Candido. Rest in peace, Candido. With Tammy Lynn, a.k.a. Sonny. I don't have to tell you about that right now, do I? And of course, they were with former friend, now foe, the Jackmaster John Diamond in a six-man tag team war. The bout started off with Big Daddy up in Tammy Lynn's face. That's right, Sonny. Laying the bad mouth on the former WWF beauty who responded with a vicious big slap to my face. I believe it was this side of my face. And uh, the 300-pound madman, which is me, uh, was sent reeling, and I took the bump for Sonny. 
Put that in your pipe and smoke it. The action spilled outside where all four men traded chair shots, railing whips, and Diamond laid out Big Daddy with a big clothesline after the GOC attempted and missed his own clothesline into the steel railing and down onto the hardwood floor. No fucking mats. The giant primo left Candido laying outside the ring and threw a table into the ring to Vito. He set it up, but the Jackmaster, recovering from a low blow and being slammed by DeVito, gets up and slammed DeVito, put him on a table, climbed on top of the rope. A dazed GOC showed up at the last minute. That's why I'm the notorious manager in the business, the most notorious, and jump into the apron and grab a diamond's legs because I'll do anything to get my men over and to go over for my men. It's about the fucking money. That's what I'm there for. Diamond suplexed DeVito through the table. Candido broke up the attempted pin only to find himself on the receiving end of a huge choke slam from the giant. Tammy Lynn, now up on the ring apron, Primo grabbed Diamond by the throat to deliver another choke slam, but Sonny sprayed something, I don't know, mace or something, chemicals into the eye of Carnero. Candido clipped the giant's legs from behind. Both Candido and Diamond covered Primo for the win. That sucked. We still got paid. Main event money. Also on the card. The man they call Gilbert, the WWF light heavyweight champion. Gilbert. How you doing, Dwayne? Hope you're doing well, my friend. Ramblin' Rich Myers. NEW heavyweight champion, Roughhouse Ralph Mosca. Light heavyweight champion, the late great Xavier, John Xavier, who was the first Ring of Honor champion. Big Dave Vicious. Kid USA. Sledge. Paul Adams. Rest in peace, Paul. You too, Big Dave. The Mighty Midgets and WWF legends and stars, rest in peace, ladies, the fabulous Moolah and Mae Young. We continue with the 2000 World Tour here in the time machine for the GOC. Story time. Boston, Massachusetts, March 7, 2000. WWF Smackdown at the Fleet Center. Big Daddy and Alan P. were seen exiting the Super Stretch Limo in Beantown at the TV tapings of Smackdown. After the event, two cool members, Rikishi Fatu and Grandmaster Sexay, Brian Christopher, were having car trouble and bum-rushed by hundreds of frenzied fans up there in that Liptar town of Boston. As Boston's finest attempted to control the crowd, Too Cool was rescued by the GOC, pulled up in the stretch, whisked away the two superstars, and all the WWF guys and stars showed up at the legendary Cow Looms. That's right, Andy Wong's place. Up there in Beantown, Kowloon's in Saugus, Massachusetts. A legendary place. Uh, just recently, they did the uh, vignette with uh, MJF and Adam Cole at Kowloon's where they clotheslined the waiter. And, of course, that's where everyone goes from the WWF, WWE, especially back in the legendary days because they treat you like gold. The food and beverage and entertainment and atmosphere is second to none. Thank you so much for always treating me with respect, Andy Wong. Kowloon's, if you're ever up there, you're not going to want to miss that meal and hanging out there. Legends, hallowed ground. So we ended up at Kowloon's for a feast second to none in the early morning hours. Big Daddy was seen chilling with Rikishi, chatting with Lillian Garcia, chuckling with Ivory, raising the eyebrow with The Rock, sipping favorite beverages, a scorpion bowl, with Grandmaster Sexe. Chris Jericho and the outrageous Bubba Ray and Devon, the Dudley boys who we shared a scorpion ball. Also on hand that night and many nights after that at Kowloon's test, this one particular night where we actually saved and stretch limo for too cool. Unbelievable. Test, Prince Albert, the King, the Cat, meow, Edge, Christian, Adam Copeland. Can you smell what Big Daddy's cooking in the limo ride with Lillian Garcia and The Rock on our way back from Saugus to the city? I got dropped off in Hartford. I like, think I did crazy, man. No, it was Ivory or Lillian. I believe it was I, uh, Lillian, great lady. Uh, Ivory was the one who said, uh, Rock, look at the GOC's eyebrow. I had it sliced back then. No, it wasn't gang-related, man. Although some people do try to look at things that way because they think you have affiliations. Well, what did I say, man? I know people. That's all I could say. I'm from all walks of life, all races, colors, creeds, cultures. What the fuck is wrong with that? 
You do you and I'll do me. What a night. WWF Raw is War at the Civic Center in Springfield, Massachusetts. March 6th, 2000, the very next night. WWF Monday Night Raw Live, The Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy, seen live, chatting with The Rock, yucking it up with the two cool members with Kishi Fatu, Scotty Too Hottie, and Grandmaster Sexy. Rest in peace, Brian. Talking with Taz, who I just ran into last year, uh, AEW up at the casinos here on my birthday. It's always good to see you, Taz, whether it was at the Sting in New Britain, whether it was here for Monday Night Raw, or you announcing for AEW and running into you at the casino. Doesn't get better than that, man. And your boy, Hook, the fucking beast, man. Let's hope they use him the right way, man. He's no match for Joe right now, Taz. Much love and respect. Uh, yucking and chatting with the rack, yucking it up with the two cool members, talking with Taz, crippler Kevin Landry, bad attitude Kevin Landry, and Tori, of all people, and consulting that night with Shane McMahon. Is Big Daddy in negotiations was the question. What stars will NEW be contacting for the future? That was one of the groups I was working for, still runs to this day. 30 years, one of the best top independents. You talk about your levels in wrestling, A-ball, double-A, triple-A, the majors. NEW is a, tr uh, a cross between the triple-A and the majors. Check out their talent, even to this day. Here we go. February 26, 2000. NEW at the Waterbury Armory. Over 2,000 fans jammed the armory the night before the WWF pay-per-view No Way Out in Hartford, Connecticut to witness several WWF stars in action and mixed tag team match the King Jerry Lawler with the cat Miss Kitty well, teamed up to face Julio Fantastico and Miss Cara, the head cheerleader. The King and the Cat proved to be too much for the up-and-coming Fantastico TNA, Fantastico, Ring of Honor, ECW, and Kara. The cat fight between Kitty and Kara was a sight to behold. Two cool member Rikishi Fatu, and at the time, Ekmo Fatu, a.k.a. Umaga, led to the ring by the GOC Big Daddy. Reports say that we settled our difference uh, from the previous night we had an issue with the mercenaries and uh, Samoans and uh, Patterson, New Jersey, but we'll get on to that. That's Silk City Slam. We rocked the house as the building swayed back and forth to the two cool fiend. They squared off against former Seton Hall collegiate grapplers, turned pro, the Haas brothers. That's right, Charlie and the late Russ Haas. With the lip wristed Purdy Curdy Adonis. Adonis, my boy. I love you, man. Rikishi and uh, Umaga Eddie. Dominated the bout using clotheslines, body slams, splashes, sabat kicks, and then bum rush Kurt with a big right hand. The Rikishi did the big wiggle splash and the stink face on both Haas brothers. It's on the channel. The videos are on here. It's all proof. What I say is factual. That's what you get here. And then put the boots that I like I did to Kurt as only I can. You know that's my favorite maneuver. Stomping a mid Mississippi mud hole. Let that sink in. And then delivered a Samoan headbutt taught to me by the Samoans that floored the flamboyant Kurt Adonis. Rikishi and Ekmo dropped the Rikishi driver on both brothers for the pin and an easy victory. Kurt had the balls to jump into the ring, and this is why he's a legend in his own right, only to run into the 400-pound Rikishi who punished him with a devastating chokehold followed by Ekmo dropping the Rikishi bomb, the Umaga bomb, on the prone Purdy one. As the capacity crowd roared, Big Danny, Big Daddy, Big Danny, what the fuck am I talking about? My mind's like a lazy Susan. It'll come back around. Big Daddy handed Eki Umaga the yellow shades and then placed them on Rikishi and it was on. Rikishi, Umaga, Eki, and Big Daddy side by side, arms crossed, heads down. With the music pumping, the fans clapping, and the building moving, all three over 300 pounders got jiggy with it. I'm Rick James, bitch. Dave Chappelle, that's to you. Doing the two cool dance with Rikishi riding and popping to the capacity crowd. They were in a frenzy that night. And other action on that card. 
Here's the results. Here's the card. Here's the action. Rough House Ralph Mosca won the NEW Heavyweight title in a number one contenders match over Big Day Vicious. What earlier in the evening won a 20-man battle royal for that right. WWF stars and legends Fabulous Moolah and Mae Young defeated Dirty Don Montoya and manager Paul Adams. Christian York pinned Joey Matthews. Xavier beat Lightning Mike Quackenbush for the light heavyweight title in Quack's last pro match. Sledge went over on J.P. Black. Julio of La Raza pinned G.I. Johnny Graham. Also seen in the locker room were Impact players, ECW Jason Knight, former WWF World Heavyweight Champion, Mr. Bob Backlund, who actually did an interview that was uh, quite, dis quite disturbing to the fans. Backlund was a lunatic. We go on to the previous night, as mentioned. Again, we're over an hour. Stay with me here. We may go an hour and a half. February 25th, 2000. NEW at Patterson High School in Patterson, New Jersey. Over a thousand rowdy and raucous fans. And if you know that hood, wow. Yeah, we had weapons. Turned out to witness the action for Silk City Slam. WWF superstar Jerry King Lawler with the cat squared off against Julio Fantastico and Miss Cara the head cheerleader. You see what goes on here on Double Shot, Triple Shot Nights. That's how it's done. Fantastico showed that someday he'll soon be in the WWF. And that's why he ended up in TNA and went to the places that he did. By taking the king to the limit. When the smoke cleared, Lawler delivered his infamous pile driver on the Latin Dragon for the win. As the bell sounded, the cat and Kara went at each other. Overzealous crowd, of course, Darren Patterson, chanting, Puppies! Puppies. Whoop, 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 whoop. Who let the dogs out? No puppies were unveiled that night. Well, in the locker room, maybe. I'm about to say it. What, what? What? Don't hate, appreciate, man. Don't hate the player, hate the game. In a special feature match that rocked the house, the GOC Big Daddy led the special forces tag team known as the Mercenaries. Corporal Punishment, G.I. Johnny Graham, against WWF superstars and two cool member. The over 400-pound Rikishi Fatu and his 375-pound uh, partner, Umaga, went on to become Umaga, Ekmo Fatu, for relatable sakes here. The mercenaries and Big Daddy held their ground for a little while until Rikishi was tagged. Rikishi tossed both mer mercenaries to opposite ring corners, slamming into each other ass first and giving the stink face, followed by some devastating clotheslines. A savat kit, actually, yeah, from Rikishi. Mobile, hostile, agile, nimbile. And a crunching right to the face of Big Daddy. I might still have the mark. Sent me reeling off the ring apron. Into the crowd. Eki picked up the smaller of the two mercenaries and delivered the Rikishi driver for the pin. As the ref counted three, the GOC jumped in the ring attempting to break up the pin with a forearm smash to Rikishi. Hey, I'll give you a forearm shiver. Big Daddy jumped in and attempted to break it up, as we said. Ekmo, Umaga, grabbed the GOC and knocked them senseless with a vicious headbutt that they taught me themselves. Man, I had my nipple rings on at the time, so when Umaga grabbed me, he grabbed one of my nipples, and that ring started bleeding, and then the fucking headbutt. You wonder why at 60 I am trying to get in shape, man. But it's legit. Ain't nothing fake about this shit. Again, I took the headbutt. Rikishi at that point drags me into the corner, to the ring corner, and the crowd's roaring. I couldn't even hear myself think, half unconscious, spinning around. Gonna go around in circles. Dun, 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 dun. Gonna fly high like a bird up in the sky. Dun, 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 dun. Gonna go around in circles. That's how I felt. Rest in peace, Eki. Unbelievable. Don't let me get on to BSK and Yokozuna, please. Uh, that's another story for another time. Rikishi gets me into the into the corner. The crowd is going crazy. He climbs up to the second tope, second rope, does the springboard to give me the Rikishi bomb onto a semi-conscious GOC. Rikishi and Ekmo and the ref, Dave Dwinnell, the ring man. Go out and buy his book. The ring man, Dave Dwinnell, the legendary referee, and I happen to have it right here on time. That night in Patterson, New Jersey, myself and the mercenaries got our asses kicked by Umaga and Rikishi. At the end of the match, The Ring Man, that's right, unbelievable book, you can order it online. Referee Dave Dwinnell, I have the video, it's here on the network, did the two cool dance. What do you think, Dave? 
my man Dave Dwinell. I hope you're doing well. Hi, in regards to the wife. Uh, uh, how about that? Uh, and of course, myself and the mer mercenaries were none too happy. Here we go. Let's go into 1999. Stick with me here. This is, you guys wanted it. You fucking got it. I'm on a roll now. Watertown, Connecticut. November 12th, 1999. The Autumn Ambush Tour rocked a sold-out crowd in Watertown. In a double main event, WWF superstar Jerry King Lawler with Miss Kitty, a.k.a. Stacy, took on Julio Sanchez with Miss Kara. You see how this went all over the territory. Pile driver on the Latin King. Lawler proved to be too much after that pile driver. Unbelievable. There's none better than, than the King in that pile driver. And then when a finish is a fucking finish. Not like today. You hit somebody, they're done. One, two, three, it's out. Not 15 false finishes. Everybody kicking up at one or two. Come on, man. 2024 in the business. I know it's hot, but really, can we respect some tradition and honor? I always talk about the rear view mirror, honoring that. And then don't get stuck back there. I get it. Look in that front windshield. Full speed ahead and do you understand what the fuck I'm talking about? McFly, is anybody home? And if you're missing this episode, I don't know. I'm glad I didn't cut it up into two parts. We're an hour and 15 minutes in. And this is like watching Netflix or something like that. A documentary on a network. Uh, on the cop, on the cop. All right, stick with me. Again, King. This kitty at the time with water. I hope I'm not drooling and spittle like I see sometimes. I didn't even drink my water with lemon yet. All I had was coffee today. Pete's coffee. Good stuff. All right, let me not get distracted here. You know what can happen. I go on and on and on. The whole feud between Lawler and Miss Kitty and Kara and Julio. Uh, kitty jumped into the ring and Kitty bitch slapped Kara, resulting in another cat fight, which saw at this night Kara's puppies made an unscheduled appearance. That's right. Lawler with the puppies back then. I get it. In this day and age, from the Me Too movement to what's going on with VKM now and WWE and all that and all the allegations and where to smoke this fire. But this was in the ring in front of everyone. Harmless, but then the puppies came out, man. Oh, who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? You don't get this anywhere else. The Guardian of Chaos led Jackmaster John Diamond just got back from a successful tour in WWC, Carlos Colon's in, uh, WWC in Puerto Rico. No me joda, Marco, muevete, culo, pendejo, man. De nada, man. It's a joke. Okay, fade. I'm kidding. It's a work. Jackmaster with the GOC and former WWF star Sal Sincere with that annoying fucking whistle. I love you though, Sal. Hey, oh god, oh, hey, oh god, I'm a fangara. I'm a fangua mama though. I'm gabagoo. He's a great guy, Sal Sincere. Into battle against former two time champion Yokozuna and the legendary Jake the Snake Roberts. That's right. Holy cromoly. Big Daddy Diamond and Sincere were booed so loudly they refused to wrestle and actually left the building before returning to an even louder response. Talk about heat. When Jake and Yoko made their way to the ring, you couldn't hear yourself think. Under the GOC's direction, Diamond and Sincere attacked and double teamed Jake before the bell, rendering him helpless. The double and triple teaming continued for several minutes with Diamond and Sincere making several tags. And Big Daddy doing his usual dirty work at ringside, choking out the snake, pounding Jake with the elbow smashes. When Jake finally made the tag to Yoko, the former WWF champion delivered two powerful body slams to Diamond that almost collapsed the ring and sent Sincere reeling outside to the GOC. Sal Sincere. When Sincere was tagged in, for some reason, Big Daddy called him back to the corner, delivering instructions that I always do that appeared to have some impact on Yoko Zuna. Can somebody say swerve? And I don't mean swerve Strickland. Could somebody say that double cross? I think that you can. Pay attention now. So I, I, I call I call back sincere, okay? Gave him instructions that appeared to have an impact on Yokozuna. That's where we were. I gotta tie this up like a nice little bone. Sincere refused to lock up, resulting in Yoko tagging Jake back in. Somebody smell set up? I just gave it away. And Sincere tagging the Jackmaster back, and Jake proceeded to deliver the DDT to Diamond and went for the pin and the victory. 
Big Daddy was seen instructing Yokozuna to go in and break up the pin. That's right, I fucking told him. <laughs> so Yoko gets in, drops the huge 600-pound leg on both Jake and Diamond, pinning both men and leave. We left them in the middle of the ring while Sal Sincere, yours truly, and Yokozuna celebrated at ringside. Big Daddy Walt was also seen leaving the arena in a limo with Yoko that night. When, what does this mean for the Northeast area? Is the most notorious manager in the business forming a parent union with the biggest wrestler in the industry and former two-time WWF champion Yoko Zuna? Also on the card, the results. Reckless Youth, Dirty Don Montoya, Rough House Ralph Mosca, Kid USA, Xavier, Rob, no Rob Noxious, members from the rock band that I've mentioned, my old buddies, the, the Viseras, Crucible, and Team Visera. Am I rumbling? Should I take a break? We're an hour and 20 minutes in. Can I take a little sip? Stay with me. We're coming up on national news here from uh, 24 years ago. In my career at the time, I'm, what am I at the time? I'm in my middle to late 30s at the time, still going hard. Thanks for bearing with me. I hope you're here for the whole show. I really do. You're not, I'm, I'm glad you stayed to the end. I appreciate much love and respect. November 9th, 1999. Talk Soup, as previously mentioned, on the E! Network, E! Entertainment, the Guardian of Chaos Big Daddy continues his assault on national TV, appearing on the E! Entertainment Network variety show. Talk soup about his debut on the Jerry Springer show. Big Daddy and the mighty Angus, a.k.a. Benny, were on the E! Clip of the Week and Clip of the Month. Again, Jerry Springer, CNN, Talk Soup, E! Entertainment. Wow, pay-per-view. I had a rub. I, I had a rub, man. I got the rub. I, I think that's, that's on this page of the website, which I'm on, uh, the official website of the Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy. Again, this is dated uh, 8.42 a.m. on June 11th, 2000. Again, shout out to the late, great Danny Quirk, Spider, who was in charge of my website at the time and did all the reporting. I mean, this was even, this was reported on members at Zoom that goes to show you how different it was, and that's only 24 years ago. My career goes back to my debut in 1991, and then the stories of training and road stories and learning the business in the 80s. So I just wanted to give you guys this extended show on story time with the GOC. I thought I was going to get into uh, Matt Memories, but uh, I got a lot of requests for this, and I've ignored it for the last couple of months. So thank you for being here again. If you did, this is the tip of the iceberg, the summer of 2000, and the winter of 1999 in my career, my journey, we'll say, in pro wrestling, because my career was behind the walls. But just to let you know who I am, put a face to the product, actual information, factual information. Whenever you're here on this fucking channel, you learn something. Come on back, stay tuned to the community page, like, hit the smash button, and I'll say that to say this, because I tell it like it is, don't you dare miss it. <laughs>